Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the sampling distribution of the difference of means. So that's the, our that's our x bar one minus x bar two. This is going to be a situation where we're measuring the difference in the means of two different samples. Let's take a look at our prompt before we back bounce back up to our box. Here's an example. Is it more expensive to live in California or Florida? Monthly cost of living expenses for California are approximately normal with a mean of mu sub c is equal to 10,800. A standard deviation of sigma c is 3,200. Monthly cost of living expenses for Florida are approximately normal with a mean of mu sub f is 8,500 and a standard deviation of sigma sub f of 2,700. <clears throat> Suppose we select an independent. Uh, suppose we select uh, independent simple random samples of 16 residents. So that means n equals 16 of California and nine residents of Florida, and calculate the sample mean monthly cost of living, x sub c and x sub f. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're saying we know the mean of each of them. But we also see that the standard deviation could cause them to overlap. So what is, is there truly a significant difference between the average cost of living in Florida and the average cost of living in California? And so when we talk about all of these important ideas up here in the box, keep in mind that's the sort of situation that we're measuring. Let's divide our box about two thirds, one third, and talk about the sampling distribution of x bar sub one minus x bar sub two. So the difference in two sample means. When we determine our shape, it really depends on the shape of the sampling distributions of each individual sample. We need to check to see is sample one approximately normal? Or is the sampling distribution that sample one was pulled from approximately normal? Is the sampling distribution of x bar sub two approximately normal? So we're gonna say check. both sampling distributions. And when we check both sampling distributions, one of two things has to be true for the sampling distribution to yield a positive result, meaning a positive yes, it is approximately normal. So one is the population approximately normal. And two, so this is an or, so one or two has to be true, or our sample size is greater than or equal to 30, and we use the central limit theorem. Our center can be found by finding so center of x bar sub one minus x bar sub two, by finding the difference <clears throat> in the means of the two populations. And our variability is based on the standard deviation calculations for both of our samples. To recap, our standard deviation is equal to the square root of standard deviation one squared over sample size one plus standard deviation two squared over sample size two squared, and then we take the square root of all of that. On the other side here, what this allows us to do is now that we have a sampling distribution for the difference of the two means, we can then do some normal calculations based on the difference in those two means. And if you'll notice, We wanted to find that it was approximately normal, right? And what that allows us to do is have an approximately normal curve that's based on having a mean, which is the difference in the two sample means, and also our standard deviation calculated, x bar sub one minus x bar sub two. And we can use one of two things. Either we can use our z-score where we take 
our difference in our sample means and subtract that from what we got from population means and put it over the standard deviation. And again, these are going to look familiar because this is what we just talked about. Or we can use normal CDF. And if we use normal CDF, we need to have our low, our upper. We need to have our mean, x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2. And then our standard deviation, which is from our formula. Sorry to smush that in there on you guys. So then when we jump down to this example for check your understanding, we're kind of plugging in some of the pieces here to find what the shape of our sampling distribution is, uh, to find the mean and the standard deviation, and then to calculate some probability. So a good idea here would be to pause the video and try this problem and then come back after and watch as you have your answer, watch my explanation and see if you got it right. I'm gonna keep going. What is the shape of the sampling distribution of x bar sub c minus x bar sub f? So if we look back up here, we want to check to see that both sampling distributions are approximately normal. Well, x bar sub c comes from our cost of living expenses for California, and it's approximately normal. So uh, it's approximately normal. because it said so in the prompt. So one of the, one, like we said up here, or, so it could have been a sample size greater than 30, which it's not, but it comes from a population that's approximately normal. And our X bar sub F is approximately normal. And it's approximately normal because it says it's approximately normal. So we would say both populations are approximately normal. So the sampling distribution of x bar sub 1 minus x bar is approximately normal. Okay? So then let's find the mean and the standard deviation. Once again, we have our mean formula is equal to the difference in our means and our standard deviation formula is the square root of our standard deviation one squared over N1 plus standard deviation two squared over N2. So really this is kind of a plug and chug, plug and play kind of a situation. I don't really wanna do that. Let's calculate our mean. Our mean would be mu sub c minus mu sub f, which is equal to 10,800 minus 8,200, 8,500. And that would leave us with 2,300. So our mean of our difference is 2,300. And then if we bounce down to our standard deviation, we're going to do the standard deviation of 3,200 squared over, and our sample size is 16 of California, so that would be 16 squared. Nope, just 16. And then our standard deviation over here is 2,700 for our Florida. So we'll square that and put that over 9. And when we do our calculations there, we should get $1,204.16. All right, so those are kind of plug and play formulas. They flow out of the fact that we check to see that it's approximately normal, right? So we can now do these calculations and that's a good thing. So here's where we use that information. We wanna calculate the probability that the average monthly cost of living expense for the California residents is less than average monthly cost living expense for the nine Florida residents. So let's think about this for, for a minute. We want the probability that x bar sub c is less than x bar sub f, right? We can't really calculate that as is. That's not really a good statement for us to use because if I look at my normal curve, in the middle I've got 2300 and it's normal 
with a mean of 2300, which is what I got in part B, right? And I've got a standard deviation of $1,204.16, which is my standard deviation up here. Well, this doesn't really translate to there. But what I can say is this. This is really the probability of x bar sub c minus x bar sub f being less than zero. Because if I, if I subtract a bigger number from a smaller number, then it makes it below zero. And so if this is this whole curve, and I'm going to label it, sampling distribution of x bar sub 1 minus x bar sub 2. What we're saying is here in the middle, the mean is the average difference is 2,300. Well, if I want it to be less than 0, I've got to put that here. And I want this part of my curve because I want it to be less than 0. A couple of different ways to calculate that. Let's use the z-score method. So if I'm looking at my z-score, what I'm saying is that x bar sub c minus x bar sub f minus mu sub c, mu sub f, over my standard deviation. And you want to get used to writing out these formulas, right? A lot of questions based on the meaning of these formulas, and it allows you to see how does the standard deviation change as we change things like sample size. So z is equal to 0 minus 2300, because 2300 was our mean difference and zero was the difference that we're thinking about and then on the bottom goes our standard deviation so we end up with a z-score of negative 1.91 and we use table a to get 0 0.028 the other way to do this would have been to use normal cdf and to go from negative 9, 9, 9, 9, all the way up to 0 with a mean of 2300, a standard deviation of 1204.16. And we label it low, upper, uh, mean, and then standard deviation. And it would give us uh, the same answer, okay? So as you're thinking about this mean difference, important points here. In order to be able to use the formulas and to talk about the center and the shape to make something look approximately normal, we need to check that one of these two things is true. Either each of them come from a, a population that's approximately normal or they exceed the size limit to use the central limit theorem, which is that sample size of 30. Then we can apply our formulas where we compare our centers and get our mean and then we can use our standard deviation. And then as per usual, we can do our normal calculations down here. All right. So that's the basics of the sampling distribution of x bar one minus x bar sub two. 